Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the inspector in principle. Now, this is where you can essentially modify and manipulate all of your items as well as artboards on your page. So it's going to be essentially equivalent to the inspector in Sketch where you can change the color shapes, you can do things like that, just a little bit different because it's going to be interaction based. So let's get going on that right now. So over the course of the next few videos, we're just going to be going over different features and areas of the principal interface. Now I want to go ahead and delete this artboard that we have here, just straight up. And you'll notice you can't. In Sketch, you have this blank area, right? Where you can have as many artboards as you want or whatever, but, uh, and they can all be different sizes, you know, but in, in principle here, we have to have an artboard. All of our work has to be done on an artboard. We can't do anything outside of this. And more importantly, we can't have multiple different sized artboards. If I click this plus new artboard, you can see it creates a new one for us and it's the exact same size. If we adjust the size of this one, well, some things have happened here. Let's go ahead and, and if we adjust the size of the second one, you'll notice that, okay, this was now 722 in width it adjusted this other one as well. So if we adjust this one now, you can see they both have to be the same size. So our boards in principle always have to be the same size. Now the area of focus in this video is going to be this area over here. Now there's a lot here and in Sketch, I believe it's called the inspector. This is where we're going to be basically controlling a lot of our stuff. You'll notice that in in the applications like sketch we had a whole bunch of different vector options in principle we have an option for a rectangle now you can move it between our boards obviously but this is different right we can't really get in here and do a whole lot of vector drawing and that's fine because most of the stuff on the web is going to be uh, sort of this type of shape. If you need to bring in other assets though from other applications such as SVGs or anything like that, that's certainly doable. You can really just drag and drop stuff if you want. Here's the giant image. So if you need to do any more intense graphic stuff than what would be a rectangle or as you'll soon see a rounded rectangle into a circle, then you're going to want to do it outside of principle. Now, over here in the inspector, we have lots of tools. Let's go ahead and add another rectangle as well. We have two here, scale this one up. You could see that we can set these to be the exact dimensions and size that we want just by modifying these values. For instance, the X value is going to be the width of this object. We want this to be 320 by 200. And the X value here is going to be the position of this in the X coordinate. So let's say we wanted this to be at 320, 180. You can actually use your keyboard and either type in new values or hit the up and down arrows uh, to change this value. In addition, we have width and height, which can be locked if you select this lock. And that way they're going to grow as a perfect square. If you select this lock to have it unlocked, we can increase the height. Now, another thing to notice, if you want to increase this by 10 pixels, you can hold the shift key and this will increase this value by 10 pixels a little bit greater there than just a, a, the one pixel thing. Um, if you wanted to just maybe manually go through this, if you wanted to uh, be able to set your number, you can obviously just type in your number here if you know what it is. Now we can also change the angle of something. We can do so just by increasing this percentage. 180 is going to have this be completely flapped around. You'll notice that the degree symbol is automatically inserted for us upon hitting enter, and that's super cool. Now next we have scale. Now the scale property is going to make this thing larger by a multiplication of it, right? So this is three times larger, two times larger, this is one, zero. And as you could see, scale is a quick way of making something larger based on the actual scale dimensions of this thing. It's not changing the right or left dimensions, it's just overall increasing the scale. For instance, one thing you'll notice is that when we increase the scale to two of the square, the dimensions for the width and height are still set to 178. 
regardless of what the scale is and this thing getting quite a bit larger. So scale is a way that you can uh, grow things by a set scale. Okay, now in addition, we have opacity, which is going to just allow us to make something more transparent the less this number is. And the radius is going to allow us to increase a border radius. Now, because this item is 178 pixels wide, what we need to do is have at least 178 pixels for a radius. What we need is to have at least half of that, right? We need half of that to be the radius before it turns into a full on circle, or in this case, an oval because the height and width are different. But as you can see here, that's how you're going to create circular or oval shapes. Now we can now change things like the fill color. We can make this red. You can see it's still transparent, so it's not the full red value. You can have this be a photo if you choose media. You can have a stroke on this. Right now there's currently no stroke. You can have the stroke be any color. So there are some like really basic vector tools within principle, but to be honest, if you're doing any sort of uh, big vector work here, you're gonna wanna do it outside. Now in addition, we can have things like a shadow. The shadow controls have a blur and an X and a Y value, just like you'd be used to. All of this stuff is animatable, by the way. So we can do some pretty cool stuff. In addition, we have this static and static, and you might be wondering what's up with this. Well, this is the drag. If we set this to vertical drag, now let's come into our inspector here. You'll notice we can click and drag this vertically. Man, that's pretty sweet, right? I mean, it's not doing anything, but when you let go, it stays there. Just like this. Wow. So, I mean, uh, just by simply saying, hey, you can drag this vertically, we now have the ability to move this around on the canvas. And if you set horizontal to drag, you could now move this anywhere. Now you notice it passes behind the square. That's because the layer is below the layer. But all around here, uh, you can see that we've done some pretty cool stuff already just by messing around with these options here. And this is where you're going to spend some time because these options uh, are going to, you know, give you access to controlling any of your properties. Now, this stuff up here, if you haven't seen these symbols, this is all alignment and distribution. If we want to select both of these shapes, we can say align centers and it's going to move them on top of each other. Let's undo that. If we wanted to align them at the top, we could click align top edges, likewise align bottom edges, align center. We can push them both to the right, both to the left. And if we were to have another shape, which we can go ahead and quickly add here, let me just add a rectangle. Let's drop in another rectangle here. We can grab all three of these shapes and say this one, distribute horizontally, and it'll make sure the space between them all is even. So this is a tool that you would find on pretty much any graphics application. If you've used Sketch or anything like that, this should be total commonplace. But just know that you can align and distribute your items really super easy up top here. Okay, so this is the inspector in principle. It's nothing groundbreaking. This is pretty much what you're used to in terms of other graphics applications. The only difference is we have some things like the dragging vertical and horizontal stuff. But all in all, pretty sweet. In the next video, we're actually going to create a quick file in Sketch and we're going to import it. If you don't have Sketch, no big deal, but you should be able to see exactly just how easy it is to bring in a, another document from something like Sketch. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in this video or hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. If you'd like access to every single one of these files that uh, we're making throughout the course of this series, you can do so by being a subscriber on Level Up Tutorials or head to store.leveluptutorials.com. You can purchase your subscription or you can actually purchase this entire series outright along with the examples if, of course, subscriptions aren't your thing. So, as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.